three, two, one. Welcome to the Light Forge. This is Adbukta. This is Murps. Hello. Uh, we are less than a week away from Diablo 2. That is so important here. Okay. That is that the is main very, news. Very important. Um, that's it for the podcast. Thank you guys for listening. We'll be back next week with um, Diablo 2 analysis. All right. Look, not much is happening in Hearthstone. People are waiting for mercenaries. They're waiting for the frogs to disappear from bgs all right every twitch channel has leapers on there like the 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 amount of leapers getting spammed is astronomically high because that's what the meta is let's just talk about what there is to talk about so first of all for arena we have the leaderboards they're right. out they're out okay let's go through and congratulate a lot of these individuals first okay, okay. before we congratulate them this is the leaderboards for july 1st to september 1st so these are the leaderboards for the end of the pre uh stormwind meta and the first month of the stormwind meta but they're like combined so you just any 30 it's uh, 30 consecutive runs within that time period spanning two totally different metas yep uh all right let's look at north america like the uh the na or the americas um leaderboard first number one we have judge with 8.23 numerically tied with language hacker who is also 8.23 and Language Hacker addressed this, like, he's number two, even though they have the same average wins, which means that Judge eked by by having more 12 wins. Uh, huge round of applause. I mean, numerically, they are tied. Uh, I think if you've been watching Arena at all in, like, the past couple of years, you know Judge. We've had Judge on the show it was kind of just a matter of time. I'm not taking anything away from Judge. If anything, it's just like, <laughs> we, we know how skilled he is. We know how much he plays. And uh, congrats to him. And congrats to Language Hacker, who just dominates in all game modes. Let's, let's face it. I've watched him a lot just play Arena um, the past like couple of months. And he is just as methodical. He is just as guild in arena as he is and constructed and in all wizard poker so really really like huge accomplishment to both of them congrats uh rounding out the top 10 we have zamos good luck randolph evan uh some boomer like who no one really cares about <laughs> dreads uh lee Siki, uh jumi and veritas we see a lot of repeat players just reinforcing the idea that there is skill it is not just all rng let's keep on going down and uh see who else is here uh you know we see like nogali akinar by the way if i miss your name i deeply apologize uh only bad puns i see him in twitch chat a lot redbeard is here as well um Let's keep on going down. Who else? Uh, Thalaritas, I recognize. Just like people that, when I have played, um, I see these names. Isherwood is here. Nice to see Isherwood back on the grind. Uh, How Real. And that is that is it for like the top 100. I'm not uh, going to go through all Zeddy. once again. Zeddy is there? Zeddy's there, 92 at 6.7. And again, oh, wow. Like, so uh, it's 30 consecutive runs, right? So some people try to go for the leaderboard. I don't know if Zeddy tried to go for the leaderboard, uh, but if you do 30 runs and you are above a 6.3, uh, at or above a 6.3, you would be on this leaderboard because this leaderboard goes to 200. Yeah. Uh, this is, it, it just shows kind of like, number one, how many people still do play arena and, uh, kind of what it takes nowadays to be infinite and be one of the top players. It's certainly mm -hmm. not easy. Like it, it's definitely, definitely not easy. 
Yep. All right. Uh, this is. I'm trying to find the. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> if we move to EU, uh, not a surprise to to anyone, but the greatest arena player of all time, Stan Udachi, number one again. I don't know how many times he's been number one. This is kind of insane. Like, you know, you have people who have been number one multiple times. You have people who have been like the top five multiple times. And then you have Stan Udachi, kind of like the Wayne Gretzky of <laughs> Arena. Just like, you know, you have all these ho- hockey players. They put up amazing stats. And then you compare like Wayne Gretzky stats to the rest of the field. And you're just like, that's not fair. That's who he is. Uh, so look, congrats on number one, but by now we expect it. So good job, buddy. <laughs> uh, but uh, with a 8.63 average, he actually tied someone else, uh, Ho Soki, but eked by with more 12 wins. That's that clutch gene. Uh, I also see individuals like Hibadino, uh, Miss Elbow, Language Hacker on EU. Top 20 as well. What a beast. What a god. Just doing uh, really good things there. So congrats to everyone um, on the leaderboards. If you made it, that means you played a ton of arena, in which case I'm sorry. But you also showed uh, just a lot of skill um, because the game is tough nowadays. It's mm-hmm. really hard. Um, not only do you have to go on H3 play and figure out the meta from there, that's a necessity. Uh, but you really have to make these plays which differentiate yourself from everyone else who is just trying to play like these green cards and just not really understanding like what is the value of initiative what is the value of face damage these days and that's always changing that's constantly changing whenever they do micro adjust whenever a new expansion comes out so big uh clap 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 to everyone Mm -hmm. Other people on this list I recognize from our chat. We have Dr. Stein, who actually apparently still plays Arena. Um, SKHR is on here. Jumi's on here. Those are the people that I recognize from our chat. Maybe yep. more. I'm sorry if, uh, if we left you out. Now, uh, I think it is also important, though, to note judge did this for the last leaderboards and he's doing it again we're on arena hs he is trying to compile data to figure out why averages are wrong you Mm. heard me correctly the guy who was number one this time all still realizes because a lot of people are reporting this uh that averages are not correct as in it's not consistently or easily incorrect in a way that, that people can solve. It's, it's not just like, oh, they cut off a day at the beginning and the end. And then people who used Excel sheets to track, they can just compare it. It seems like some runs in the middle for people are just not counting. And they're just these random days and no one knows why. And, you know, it's really funny because this has been going on, well, it's not really funny for people who take it seriously, <laughs> but you know, if you're taking Arena seriously, I don't know what you're expecting nowadays. Um, the averages are just not, inc- uh, sorry, they're just not completely correct, as in, th- they're mostly correct, mm-hmm. and people will be like, yeah, it's off by like just a little bit, and if they, so they're doing kind of like guess and check, where they'll take away a run, and be like, if I take away this run, does it match the number? And they are trying to, you know, take away runs on the same day, on the same night, during the same time period. Right now, there's hypotheses going on. It's like, do, did they just not track during this, like, set number of hours when they did maintenance or something? It's, you know, it, it really dampens the mood a little bit when you have someone like Judge, who just got number one, and I'm sure is very happy, but he is doing the Sherlock Holmes investigating, being like, okay, why is everyone's averages slightly incorrect here? Um, I don't think you have examples of people who are like averaging six, but they end up with eight or they, Mm -hmm. it says they, they have eight and then they end up with six. It's nothing that serious, but I also remember, um, when I got number one on NA, so this was four years ago, which is an eternity. If you remember lost in all of this, my average was wrong. It was actually a little bit lower than what I, uh, like what I had tracked. 
I didn't understand it, but I was just like, these numbers have whatever. never been right. Even from the very first time the leaderboard came out, not a single time did people who were in on you know uh, top like vaguely on the top of the leaderboard even come out and was like, oh yeah, uh, these numbers are correct. Everybody or. There's at least been a high percentage of players who are on the leaderboards who said, I track my wins and it doesn't match. Every single time this thing comes out. Yeah, I, I remember I was like, oh, cool. I'm number one. Uh, that's not my average. <laughs> that was never my <laughs> running 30 average. And you guys know, for me, very easy to track. That month I did, I think, total 35 runs. And I was just like, this doesn't make any sense. Um, it's lower than my, my highest 30 runs and even if they had cut off so i didn't get it but i wasn't i don't know like how much complaining can you have when you're number one right so mm -hmm. i was like whatever um but yeah so ever since then i remember i was like well this isn't really correct uh and there's like it seems like every single time someone has a complaint someone who actually tracks and they're just like that's not it it's like you know they're off by like 0.15 or off by like just a tiny bit yeah. we have yet to figure it out and blizzard is obviously not transparent with this stuff so yeah i mean they can't be transparent with that they clearly don't know what's happening yeah so um, look, congratulations to everyone who uh made it and who you know are consistently making it as well i really hope for just the like to further the validity of this leaderboard we figure it out, right? Like, I have, I don't think anyone is doubting, hopefully no one is doubting, like, Judge or Language Hacker, because if you just look at them, you can tell how good they are. But it really does suck when a lot of people are reporting these inconsistencies. Mm-hmm. Yep. Also interesting is that one of two things happened in this two-month period. I guess... Either I didn't play 30 arena runs in a 60-day period, which is possible because I think I average four a week, but I may miss a week here or like um, that, that number may go down or up. But I should be playing around like 15 arena runs, excluding the coupon so that, that it's on my account in, uh, in this period. So either I just missed it or... I have below a 6.3 average win rate. Wow, that which, sucks to suck, man. If, if someone wants to go through our, our VODs, I think I'm way above that. So I don't know if... And, and like if they don't count certain runs, for example, in the middle of a certain time period or whatever, but I'm, I'm just right on that line of, uh, of getting 30 runs over the course of those two, that two-month period. But I think I should have had more than 30 runs. Like maybe like... Just a little over 30 and i definitely have over a 6.3 win rate so yeah. i don't know i don't know what they're doing there maybe there's certain cutoffs on that 30 run but i i can uh uh there's there's definitely something going on there um, something going something on, going on there. there i mean you yeah, guys okay. see my uh -huh. my you guys see me play the arena there's no way my average is below a 6.3 there's no there's no way no there's, way there's no, no way, way. There's i no mean way. it's 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 not that i only play the good classes or whatever but even playing like not exactly all classes evenly i, I think i avoid the ones that are like unplayable um but even given that like I, i'm above 6.3 like fairly comfortably well, you could also go back in your streams and do the investigating. Yeah, but that's, that's just so much work, and I don't care enough to do it. Um, but I, I also probably did not play a single off-stream run this entire time, so you could just... I think all the runs have been on-stream, but I do think I did 30 runs on-stream. And all the streams, all, everything besides the coop, I would have done on my own account in North America. So, I don't know. I don't know if I like just missed the cutoff and I did like twenty eight or twenty nine runs or something, or if uh, or or if I actually am averaging such a terrible win rate, um, and I just don't I just don't know. Um, but we'll we'll see. If someone wants to do the math, I'd be really curious. Uh, all, right. all right, so uh, that's the arena stuff. Now let's talk about battlegrounds. All right, look, battlegrounds. The state of Battlegrounds currently, 
many people are increasingly frustrated. Uh, it is a game in which people are real because these these OP builds have been optimized, which means it, it's really really tiring getting beaten by leapfroggers. Um, like in every single game that beasts are in, it's getting tired. Get, uh, getting beaten by you know like Cthune dragons so we have nerfs incoming these were leaked these were mm -hmm. leaked about three days ago they seem very legitimate uh so i mean they're, they're not just leaked they're data mined so they're right. literally already in the game it's just that blizzard could change the values again before releasing them right so they they're not like change. official so as of sunday night uh september 19th you know 7 20 p.m this is what we know they could be changed don't hold it against us all right uh but all these right. are the upcoming nerfs and then the buffs so okay i'm gonna i'm gonna start okay. with the one that everybody cares the most about the beast changes and we're gonna go by by tribe here uh because sure. because this list is broken up in weird crazy ways so the Leapfrogger changed. The easy way out was taken. Used to give a plus two, plus two buff. Now is a plus one, plus one buff. That's something that uh, we predicted uh, last week was going to be the nerf, and it is happening. But in addition to that, there are other beasts being changed. We were hoping that Macaw changes, and Macaw did change. But Macaw's change was pretty much the, the cop-out change that, that we mentioned was a possibility, rather than an actual change of moving at different tiers. So now the new Macaw is the exact same as the old Macaw, except it can't trigger itself, which it, that, that matters, um, given how big you see a Macaws uh, get. But it is not a fundamental change to Macaw. It's a particular fix to, um, to, to this particular kind of like synergy, which, which is really the problem. Um, and on top of that, they also did a change that I was, uh, I did not think they were actually going to do, but they have moved reanimating Rattler up from tier four to tier five. And it's also gotten like bigger. It got, it got plus one, plus one. It was a six, two, now it's a seven, three. But the more important part is that it is now harder to get reanimating Rattlers. So, uh, your beast will be le less reanimated and reanimated later. So those are the uh, beast changes. Yeah, the Rattler was always too easy to get, uh, and I, I thought that was just so unnecessary for beasts. Uh, that, like, so look, that that's decent. The McCall change matters for the builds that you see, as in the Froggers. But the thing with the McCall is that it this change only matters with frogs. And if you mm -hmm. kill frogs for now, um, which do I think this kind of kills frogs uh, in a huge way? Yes, mm -hmm. because the ramp up of frogs is slow now, which means it gives people a chance to kill off the frogs, deal damage to the people going for the frogs. And uh, that makes a huge difference. Well, momentum... not only that, they halved the amount of buffs frogs give. Yeah, exactly. So like you building it up, your power in terms of like the pieces you need to collect in order for it to reach a certain power point and the amount of hits and death routers you have to go through in a battle for mm -hmm. it to get to a point in which you're, you know, like you're ping ponging these frog buffs off each other is good. Um, it is, it's really tough now. Fro like it's are really, dead. really tough. So frogs for like, you know, if they just leave things as is like this, yeah, frogs, if not dead, like they're you dead. might see it every now and again. They're dead. They are effectively dead. Yeah, they are effectively dead. <laughs> You're going to um, see it as like as like a which, joke, you know, like someone forced frogs or something. <laughs> yeah, which makes the McCall change so useless mm -hmm. because this McCall change doesn't affect anything in the game right now other than frogs because the frog buffs can leap on like can jump onto the macaw and if you see uh part of the reason why the frog build is so powerful right now is like th you know even when they hit like a lot of things and and it seems like things aren't going your way but uh you have th this one macaw left they still have like five minions left 
and your McCall, every time it attacks, it's now like 500, 500. It's a thousand, thousand, 2000, 2000. Uh, that doesn't happen anymore. The McCall actually just dies. But in all other instances, when you're using McCall, nothing really factors into this. It's just frogs. So like mm-hmm. they kill frogs and they quote nerf McCall for frogs. And I'm just like, this effectively changes nothing with McCall. And mm-hmm. it just sucks because it feels like they're doing something with McCall, but you're not doing anything at all realistically. Like, you just aren't. So it's so disappointing to me. It's like that, that they're touching McCall in this way, but it's, they're but, not, like, right? Well, we didn't really expect them to do anything with McCall because they stood by McCall through the big change. This isn't going to be the time to touch McCall. They've already, like, kind of, you know, kind of put the chips where they are, right? They've kind of already committed to McCaw in this kind of form. So we, we, we knew McCaw was, was going to change along the edges for this one particular build for frogs, which is exactly what they did. And like you said, right, given the, the huge nerf to frogs, they didn't really have to touch McCaw even. Um, but, but they did just to make sure frogs be dead dead. Um, yeah, it's, um, it, it solves the immediate problem. And I think that's what they're aiming to do with this patch. I don't think this is the wider applicable patch and that wasn't what it was meant to do at least not for something like macaw it will also put this right out there at the very beginning no no changes to uh to to bran and no changes to light fang like these are not areas that they're interested in touching right now they want to balance the tribes first and then they want to expand into the wider uh skills of, of battlegrounds they just change too many things this is what they have to do first Okay, so so frogs are dead. Now we'll actually see how good regular beasts are. And keep in mind, regular beasts got nerfed too because they nerfed the viper. Uh, I mean, the rattler. Uh, so it, it it will be interesting where beasts end up landing. The non macaw beasts that no one was playing. Uh, okay, so uh, after that, there are demon changes. Impatient Doomsayer has been moved up a tier. From three to four. So that is a fundamental change in Impatient Doomsayer. And on top of that change, with no stat buffs whatsoever, the Avenge keyword now requires four minions rather than three. So two huge nerfs coming into Doomsayer. Going up a tier with no change in stats and having Avenge four rather than Avenge three. This is the exact one I talked about. Like, this is exactly what i said mm-hmm. week, right? this is exactly your like proposed nerf and i was like oh i don't think they're gonna do that that's gonna be really like hugely different right like hugely punishing to this card uh to the value of this card um so here's the thing do i still take it when i see it on tier four yeah i do it's just it's still that good i i think that this is kind of where it belongs wait what do you mean by you take it like you take it if you are going demons not just that you, you, you take it and then you start going demons. You can still do that. You can still do that. But you think you, this card is still so powerful that it's a linchpin that you start going demons if you see this card in, the, like, let's say, your first uh, Tavern of Tier 4, despite like, either not having oh, yeah. any demons mm-hmm. or just having one it, it's demon? Still, it's, still, it's still potentially that good. Here's the thing. If you had like elementals before, as in no taunt, no death rattles, let's say that, right? Um, then maybe I would pass it. But no, if you had kind of like, you know, some tokens, mm-hmm. um, you had some stuff which like, you know, just dies. Let's say you had two Acolyte of uh, C'Thun's, right? Like, because, uh, you know, you were tearing up. You don't have like the strongest board. You didn't exactly have a direction. You were just trying to figure mm-hmm. things out. Yep. You're on tier four. You're like, let's see what it brings. You got this impatient doomsayer. Hell yeah. I'm taking it. I'm grabbing, uh, you know, the, the demons that this thing offers me. Um, it, it won't give me as much, like, but it'll still give me a, a decent amount of demons. And at the very least, even if I'm not 100% committing to demons, this is like an amazing econ generator when I still don't have a direction, right? Um, it will pay for itself in like one turn at the very least, uh, plus more, probably. So yeah, it's still, it's still great. Wait, you think you'll get Avenge 4 to trigger twice? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of stuff that generates other stuff these days. Yeah, before your impatient doomsayer dies, though, it's still a two six. Like, 
six is a pretty key like break point um and there's like once again you know acolyte of Cthulhu. that's just two bodies right there right uh there's stuff that just like generates like other bodies um i think it's very possible i think i think it's very possible i think so, most of the time if you get this as your first pick on tier four or you know not, not even counting tripling into it just if you get up to tier four and then you pick this in your first uh tavern you are not going to be able to recover like more than 50 percent of the time you're not going to be able to get it to trigger twice in the in the next battle i think you're so first of all i'm not saying you pick it and you 100 percent go demons now it's not like right right but i just mean like yeah. you won't even get the econ like up to that level like you'll, you'll get the econ equivalent to getting one coin I'd say there's like a 50% chance you get one minion and a 50% chance you get like two. Oh, I think you're really overestimating what your average oh, no. board looks like when you there's get a, to tier There's four. just a lot of stuff that is uh, like, you know, that like just leaves a token, um, spawn something else. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not saying you yeah. won't end up with eight things on the board. I'm saying the eight things won't die before this guy dies because he will attack at least once on top of potentially being hit by other stuff. Yeah, you just put them at the end. I, so here's the thing: you haven't played that much, right? It, it, it's like I, I, yeah, I but I know what boards like, look like on tier four. Like I don't know if you do. I I I think I do know what things look like on tier four, roughly. It's not like I haven't watched any battlegrounds in uh, since they did Wait, the uh, update. Yeah, I you watch things. I watch things now and then. Okay, who do you watch? I mean, I, I just watch random streams that are popular on my on my watch list, right? So I watch some Victor, I watch some Slissa. Okay, uh-huh. I mean, I've watched some Dreads. What, why, what? First of all, why, why, why would you I, do It's that? just people uh, who are on my wa- all, like follow list. Okay, uh, se- second of all, this is, this is extremely, like earth-shattering news to me i didn't know you watched i'm not, I'm not watching it a long time or something but i know what these boards roughly look like it's not like i haven't seen a tier four board since they updated it beyond the games that i've played uh-huh. um but anyway we'll uh-huh. see what happens with impatient doomsayer i'm gonna say uh my prediction is that this card will not be picked unless you are already going demons and then it's still a worthy uh a worthy kind of uh, generator and you should still pick it but if you are if you're not already going demons i don't think it's powerful enough anymore uh for you to like take and then potentially start going demons i think it'll be like kind of a one of those things that you uh you skip more often than not but we'll see uh, th- that's not the end of the demon changes, though. With that massive nerf to Impatient Doomsayer, there is a another change, which is Cathrana Tier, uh, which used to be Tier Four, and before that, um, the card that it was replacing was Tier Five, and it is now Tier Three. So it's swapped with Impatient Doomsayer on Tier. And he used to give uh, plus three to all, plus three attack to uh, all your demons, and now it gives plus two attack. And its base stats used to be seven, five. Its base stats are now five, four. Uh, but it still prevents uh, your, you from taking damage, which is the important part, uh, function of this card. So there's more of it now. You can find it more often now. Um, I like the change. That's good. Well, they wanted to move some power down. Uh, so if they're removing Doomsayer to, not removing, but shifting it up, they want to shift something down. Now Gannis just keeps on, you know, just just just, just keeps on moving down. I, I'm, I'm going to keep calling it Mal Gannis, by the way. It's, it's never whatever the thing you said was. That's definitely not it. But I'm just going to call this little baby Mal Gannis. Baby Mal Gannis. Run not, not here. here. That's exactly how it's spelled. Kathra right. not here. Baby Malganis uh, provides a little bit of tempo, and that's good. I think with demons, they are the early tempo class, so giving them more of that option, I think, fits uh, with what they are trying are trying to do. You know, grab yeah. that early slash mid game advantage. So yeah, I yeah. I like I just, it. I like the consistency when you get down to from tier four to tier three. Because whenever you want to stop this whole hurting yourself thing, you should be able to do that. 
having that be relying on RNG was always uh, one of the like most terribly game designy things that I don't think they you know they did because they needed to use Malganus and that was so big that they needed to put it later on just from a tempo perspective. But now that they're designing their own cards, right, rather than using existing Hearthstone cards, they could do stuff like this. And I think Tier 3 is a better place than Tier 4. All right. Uh, what did you want to go to next? You're, you're, you're I'm, I'm driving this. All right. Let's talk about... Um, okay, so we talked about the two nerfs to the two big ones. The third class from from last week's podcast, if you were uh, listening, the third class uh, that Merps had identified as a top class, uh, well, third, was Dragons. Uh, and they did make a change, one change, to Dragons. They uh, changed Whelp Smuggler. Whelp Smuggler used to give plus two health upon uh, uh, each time it triggers and now it's only giving plus one health but the base is now five health instead of four health so it gets like so if you trigger if you don't trigger at all it's a tiny bit better uh if you trigger once it's the same but everything after that it it gets worse than it was before so it is a it is a, a nerf to whelp smuggler um which Kind of makes sense with what we were talking about, the whole point of dragons and the whole identity of dragons in Battlegrounds as this like ultimate end game, like um, end game uh, kind of tribe that should be beating pretty much everything, including mechs, which is why other uh, cards didn't get nerfed. Um, but from the Whelp Smuggler's perspective, they wanted to allow dragons to start a little bit early. And I think they saw that and they saw the power of it. And where you said you wanted to preserve it, the devs here clearly didn't want to preserve it. And this was the area that they attacked. So rather than attacking the end game for dragons and making it more balanced with other tribes, they just said, well, you know, dragons are supposed to be really insane in the end game. But it was a little too smooth. Like they went a little too far in creating in smoothing out the early and mid game of, of dragons so now um the, the dragons are like the whelp smuggler is still a great uni, uh, unit to have in that early mid game for tempo purposes but it's not going to become that end game staple the way that it used to be it was a, a second cow ghost um, yeah whelp smuggler was you know like you needed the first cow ghost to trigger you know, all of these things, but Whelp Smuggler made it such that if you had one Calagos, you had two Calagos, you know, this is your, your, your second Calagos, uh, and it was just a little bit too easy to get, and I, I understand the power level keeps getting higher, single Calagos hasn't been good for such a long time, single Calagos means death, you, you needed to get single Calagos plus Nadina, or double Cal Ghost, and eventually into Nadina in order for you to keep up with everything else. But this was just a little bit too easy. And truly the problem was Stupid Cthune is in the game. And that hero power and that specific interaction with Whelp Smuggler, it was, it's just too easy. Like, Cthune was getting... Such easy MMR when dragons were in the game because they could just stay low, grab all the dragons, grab whelp smugglers, and get an insane amount of stats. So, look, Cthune can still do that, and it can still do pretty well. Uh, they definitely just, like, said dragons in other situations kind of just suck now. Yeah. That, that, they, 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 like, tried to reinforce that, right? Like, that was the case. And then they, like, fixed it. And now they're like, no, we, we don't want it to be totally fixed, right? Like, we want it to be not totally useless, but still, like, significantly weaker than everything else. So, look, if you get it early on, it's... As in, the, sorry, the cow goes early on, mm -hmm. and you find a whelp smuggler, it could still be all right. Uh, but you're... And because of all of these other nerfs, um, you know, you don't have the frog build hitting you for a stupid amount of damage uh, on, like, turn 9 and just killing you, like, on the spot. But, yeah, it's, it's, kind, of a, it's kind of a shame because this was supposed to make up for uh, the Calagos mm -hmm. kind of, like, power relative to everything else. 
and it's just been hit really, really hard. But that, that was always the problem. You couldn't make something like this on tier two. It's yeah. like you had to either make it harder to get or you had to make it a little bit harder to proc or something. Whelp Smuggler, the only thing you gave up was that one extra slot that wasn't a dragon. So, like, it was Calgos 2.0, but it was worse because it wasn't a Calgos, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it's so easy to get that it didn't matter. So, look, I don't love this change as in... I don't like where it leaves dragons right now. I, I think but... they're going to do more changes with dragons. Um, yeah, I, I think there has to be. But uh, it's interesting that this is, one, the direction where they went, and two, that they kind of purposefully crippled dragons, you know, like compared to, well, I mean, they're never truly crippled because Calico still exists. Um, but they, they kind of wanted to make sure dragons did not become the it tribe. It's going to need to be something they, else. I think what they might be trying to look at is what is exactly the speed of the meta now that beasts have been nerfed mm -hmm. and demon Demons. ramp has mm -hmm. been nerfed right the speed of the game has changed dramatically right um because you need to look at it uh it in these terms because whenever demons were in it's just like all right someone got an early doomsayer and that person pops off to some degree uh and with these frog builds everyone's going for it someone's going to succeed and it actually doesn't take that much for a frog build to just really ramp up and do really well. Um, and then, of course, it's like people are just picking Tess in Beast games as well. Tess is, like, so good, which is the canary in the coal mine. Like, whenever Tess is really good at a certain point, you messed up. Mm -hmm. Like, something is wrong. The meta is messed up. Uh, just like how Tess was, if you guys remember, really good during the Quillbore meta. Uh, everyone was picking Tess, uh, and you... you steal their charoga you stole all of their cool bores and uh tess was insane uh, same thing now right like you see tess in these beast games and they dominate they are stupidly good because everyone's going leapfrog yep all right uh so now let's talk about some of the things that they actually buffed and uh one of the interesting ones is pirates so the first thing they did with pirates is they took away defiant shipwright so first they buffed it and then they took it away, like within the same patch notes, within the same like leaked, uh, not leaked, a dat data mine entry. So they like considered buffing it. And this is also why, remember, we're talking about data mine stuff. This is not necessarily final. When the patch comes out on Tuesday, who knows which of these changes make it to the final? Who knows if they add additional changes? We're just going off of these are the developers' ideas at that at this point in time. Um, so Define Shipwright, uh, Shipwright is, is gone, and that was always a, a obviously not good card, um, that was not good. And instead, South Sea Captain got added back in, which we'll, we'll talk about that, I guess, later, but, um, that's, that's interesting in its own right and not necessarily in a good way. Uh, but also, you just have two straight-up buffs to some pirates. Gold Grubber is now a 4-4 instead of a 2-2, two -two, uh, a starting buff. And uh, Salty Looter, which is one of the keys in a pirate build, or should be one of the keys in the pirate build, is now a 5 health minion, so it's a 4-5 now, instead of a 4 health minion. Yeah, look, uh, they didn't touch Hogger, which is the one thing I need them to address because hogger is just it. <laughs> it it has so much gravity like it causes so many issues with balancing pirates i don't know why they keep it as in they're not making these big changes like you know what i mean they're not like they're just making the they're trying to make their vision happen right because frog happened and that was clearly not their vision because it was a silly stupid vision that you know no reasonable game developer would have. Uh, so now they're trying to see what they can actually, like, what will, you know, they're trying to make what they wanted to do actually happen. And clearly what they wanted to do still involved Hogger. It still involves Hogger. Um, and my question is, why do you not care about <laughs> the mobile gamers? <laughs> like, you want people to play this on mobile, and yet stuff like Hogger exists. So mm. I'm like, why? 
uh, you're just taking away like a certain play style for a, a ton of people who want to enjoy your game and at least play it semi competitively on mobile, which is not mm -hmm. possible. Look, so, um, yeah, like the Hogger chain... aside, these chain the the, the, the Gold Grubber and Salty Looter both needed to be buffed, right? Yeah, this is fine. Like the the problem is the same thing that we always have: pure pirates don't really ramp up until you get hogger so look is a little hp buff nice on salty looter is you know plus two plus two stats going to matter sometimes on grubber sure the peggy buff is okay um you can argue whether or not the fact that it is given to another pirate and, and not to itself how good that oh, is. Oh, oh, I didn't even. Sorry, I didn't even uh, read read uh, read read that change out because they they put it in a different spot on they the did. on the list. Okay, they tricked you. so they tricked and they you. they did they succeeded. Peggy Brittlebone uh, also got buffed uh, from a five three to a six five, and the text now states that the the buff is given to another friendly pirate rather than a random pirate. Yeah, uh, this is. Look, the problem remains. Like, you can build this up a little bit, but you're not giving them Divine Shield. You're not mm -hmm. giving them, like, a true scaling potential that matches other scaling mechanisms uh, in the mid-game. They got to get Hogger if they want to play pure Pirates, right? Uh, I'm not talking... Scam Pirates isn't Pirates. I'm saying this for, for the umptieth time. Uh, that's a Cadgar Baron build that happens to use pirates. It's not a pirate build. So look, if you want to play pure pirates, you got to get Hogger. It hasn't changed. It just helps you in those like few times in which maybe you tie instead of lose now. Maybe you win instead of mm -hmm. like lose by a tiny bit. You know, all these small margins. It's great. You're still super reliant on Hogger. So and it's all in the it, right direction because that's what pirates yeah, it's, it's should do. Right pirates direction. should it's be right tempo, direction. and pirates was like not tempo enough, and now it's like getting a little more tempo. Yeah, but look, it doesn't change the end game, right? That's what um, you're saying. It, it it doesn't change the end game, and the biggest help to pirates is honestly nerfing the other classes, right? Mm -hmm. Like buffing the class itself doesn't do nearly as much as nerfing the other classes. Uh, be, because um, the other tribes are are just so stupidly powerful right now that it's not fair to to pirates. Like they just can't get get ramped up. Yep. But um, they just they need to separate from Hogger. Hogger is toxic for them. Like it's so, holding them back. I want pirates to do well, but they can't if Hogger keeps on kind of limiting what earlier cards can do because Hogger is always there with its in, literally infinite potential. Mm -hmm. all right so next up let's talk about elementals one change happened in elementals master of realities which we made fun of a lot um in the last podcast is moved from tier six down to tier five without any adjustment in stats fantastic great i mean i don't give a damn <laughs> <laughs> this is uh um no one plays tier six elementals everyone plays uh you know some domo but a lot of the dazzling, no me recycling kind of elemental, mm -hmm. right? Like that, that's the strongest package. Like um no me with recycling. Uh, you know, you, you can have dazzling elemental in there as well. Like that's that's where the real core, the strength of elementals is. Massive realities is like sure, great. It's it's there. Um doesn't really change anything. It's it's not it's nice that that it's there, I guess, but no. So, do you think like it'll get used in elementals? Yeah, I think. I mean, it's definitely going to get used mm -hmm. more, and sometimes it gets used uh, now, even like sometimes, right? Um, so it'll get used more, um, but I'm looking for actual game changers here. So, like stuff that really shifts the the paradigm of what you expect exponentially increases the power of a certain tribe so for example when beasts got rattler right mm -hmm. i'm just like wait you can give your entire board reborn like that that's like the the 
you know, one of the biggest game changing examples, right? Like, mm-hmm. wait, wait, your tribe just has this ability to get reborn on everything? Like, that's really stupid. And it's a tribe that um, works on death battles, too. Yeah, exactly. So getting reborn, and, and, like, it's, it's really, like, that, that is so game changing, right? Um, it's, it's also like, for example, um, mechs getting mecha roll, mm-hmm. right? Like, mechs getting mecha roll, that is game changing in a way as well. Because, like, it, it, it doesn't do anything different because it is still doing divine shields. But it just builds upon it so well, right? Master of Realities, is it going to get you kind of like more stats than you're used to? Not really. I mean, like elementals are all about like just giant elementals anyways, right? So sometimes you can get like a, a, a decent amount of stats. Um, it's just a big taunt, <laughs> a big taunted thing. It's so easy to counter it doesn't really add anything to what they do. It's not like Mechorol that is like, yes, it's another Divine Shield, but the interactions and the kind of increase in power is so much compared to what mechs could do before. Mm-hmm. But that's and not the purpose of this patch. You no, know? it's they're not. not but they're like, not trying to do any of this. They're just no, trying but to... But like, if you just look at the power of Elementals before, and then mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like introducing Master of Realities in here, then the amount of times that it makes a difference. Mm-hmm. Yep added to the kind of stats that it's going to give you i'm just like nah nah okay. and i could be wrong about this i don't think i am though all right so uh okay so uh, just right after that murlocs did not change and we can talk or not talk about that but a lot of cool boards did change so the final tribe to get changes are five different cool board related cards Profit of the boar, attack is now 3, up from 2. Road boar, base attack is now 2, up from 1. Bristleback brute, stats are now 4-4, four, four, up from 3-3. Three, three. Dynamic duo, stats are now 4-5, up from 3-4. Chargla, 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 I don't know why I have so much trouble saying the word. Um, uh, now plays a blood gem on all friendly minions, including itself. So a lot of these changes, if you remember, were actually just undoing nerfs that happened after Quill Boars first came out. And the meta was not ready for Quill Boars, and Quill Boars dominated. So now after all the big changes and all the other tribes got, you know, updated, it seems like they're, orig- they're trying to restore their original vision for Quill Boars at the original power level. That's where we are with the power creep. They effectively unnerfed all of the quill bores and say, you know, this is where we're at right now. We can just bring you back to what you were before and it should be fine. And I agree. It should be fine. Quill bores right now are not good. Like solo yeah, or mono quill bores. They're not powerful enough. They don't have uh, just, they just don't have enough. Um, and it's kind of unfortunate, but this is, this is good. This brings them back. But once again, the most important thing is, uh, you know, the 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 evil witch is dead, and by witch I mean the frogs, uh, and uh, doomsayer. Not 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 even just like demons. It's doomsayer. It's mm-hmm. doomsayer is really stupid. So that's gone. Frogs are are gone, like, and now there's a chance. There's a chance for cool boars. Like one of the things that uh, that was so dominant about the frogs and the demons is that they kick in in that early mid game stage and then you just don't let go of them so that opens up that entire area of the game for other tribes and the tribes that are supposed to dominate that area of the game are pirates and quill boards so with these buffs uh coming in and the evacuation of two tribes that honestly should not have i mean you know so demons should dominate that area too but you're just going to see less people going demons because of the changes um it really opens up what these other tribes could potentially do so i think those, these cool board changes are pretty big like they're going to have an impact on the meta we'll see how it works out look uh i I played a decent amount of BGs and then I stopped. I just like full on stopped because I couldn't handle it anymore as well. And I know a lot of people where this is their job. Um, it was also getting a, definitely a little bit tiring, definitely a little bit frustrating. 
because you had games in which you either didn't go frogs, but you were really powerful with something else, and you just died to frogs, and that is frustrating. Uh, or you went frogs, but someone frogged a little bit better. Or because of the slight RNG that can happen, or actually pretty major RNG that can happen in the frog mid-game. So you don't have everything perfectly constructed. You maybe didn't or weren't able to taunt up your frog. Your baron is a little bit vulnerable. Uh, your rat, you know, like may not be like kind of perfectly positioned. You hit the wrong death rattle, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You may be the superior frog player at that point, but because of the way the hits go, uh, and you guys should know how frog battles go. Um, when the hits go poorly, you can lose by a lot. As in, you just get completely chunked. So that's a very frustrating part about the meta. It's like, you die to frogs when you don't go frogs. When you are frogs, in that mid-game, when you don't have the perfect taunts, when you don't have the perfect units, you can just get imperfect hits, and you take a butt-ton of damage, and then you die. That's, that's like really, really infuriating. So this is all going to change. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. I think a lot of people are looking forward to it. If nothing else, um, Blizzard is reinforcing the fact that they care about BGs a lot, more than they ever cared about Arena. Uh, and BGs, they want to make sure that people at least know that they are open to changes. And then with like mercenaries coming out as well, um, I'm I'm sure that you know they're they're going to be looking at these two game modes very, you mm -hmm. know, under a microscope. I mean, lot. I'm not saying that Blizzard doesn't care about BGs, but th this is not evidence that they care about BGs a lot. This is stuff that had to be done, right? Like the evidence that they care about BGs was in the the actual patch that added all these, like the original changes yeah. that caused all the problems. Now they're just fixing the problems because the problems didn't like the problems broke the game. Um, and now they're fixing them. We knew this was going to happen. And actually, frankly, it, it, it took them longer than I thought it would take to actually get this patch out. Um, but, uh, uh, that may also be because of, uh, because of some maybe technical reasons, um, that we don't know, because even now when they know what, they know what patch it, they want to do. And they still couldn't get it out in like a day or two, which sometimes they can with patches. And this one, it seems like it, it takes a little longer from when the devs are like, all right, we're final on this to when they think it's reasonable to be able to push the patch out. Um, okay, so these aren't all the changes that got data mined. These are just the minion changes. There are two hero changes that also got data mined hitting the, uh, the top heroes. Um, so Shutterwalk now costs two mana to use its hero power rather than zero mana. So they're going to be set back four mana altogether to complete the use of their hero power. And Gale Wing now reduces the cost of your next Tavern Tier upgrade by five. So um, instead of in five turns upgrades your Tavern Tier X left, it now says in five turns your next Tavern Tier upgrade costs five less. Uh, so look, these are big changes. Like, <laughs> making Shutterwalk's hero power cost two uh, means that if you understand how the game goes right now uh, and the way that Shutterwalk can greed, a lot of times what Shutterwalk does, they, they are just one turn away from dying, and then they pop off and get that minimum four, maybe like five or even six triples, and then, uh, you know, it, by triples, I mean six drops, and then they kind of dominate in tempo for like at least the next two to three turns, and then they can level, they can do whatever they want. That makes it really tough. That like having there are times I'm thinking back on like the Shutterwalk games that I've I have played and the Shutterwalk games that I have seen. Is it still possible for them to get extraordinarily lucky, be able to? pay that mana like you have to pay it once kind of going up and mm -hmm. then you have to pay it like another time basically mm -hmm. on that turn probably um it is possible like sort of but 
the the margin of error or like the room to do it is almost impossible now it, it, it's just not there for mm-hmm. you to spend four mana and then pop off it requires an ex- an extraordinary amount of luck so you just have to play shutterwalk differently now i'm curious to see where shutterwalk and en- ends up because the reason shutterwalk is so strong is because of that greed into all these six drops uh an insane amount of tempo that just gives you all of the space and if you're if you now need to spend four mana for it, um, you can't consistently do that one turn anymore. Mm-hmm. So um, it's just going to be more like a normal hero and not one where it's just like, it's getting beat up, beat up, beat up, beat up. I kill everyone. Yep. Like I, <clears throat> so uh, we'll see. Yeah, and from, like they're, yeah. they're changing Shutterwalk to the way it was meant to be. It was never yeah. meant to function the way everybody was doing it, even though I kind of predictable that that's how you would min max uh, the hero but adding this it and they didn't go like halfway to it it's not even even if they added it to be one mana there would have been some effect but they were like we just don't want you to do this anymore like this kind of play so well yeah it's it's pretty toxic right mm-hmm. and i think we all have experience if you play enough you face the shutter walk right after they get all those six drops and you're just hoping that no one has died yet because if no one has died yet, that means you can only take 15 max, mm-hmm. and hopefully you're, you're like 16, you know, and, and above. But if someone has died, you can legitimately take like 25, 30 damage on that turn, and you're just really mad. There was nothing you could do. You know, you leveled up fairly, quote unquote, and you just face Shutterwalk on that turn that they completely popped off, and it's really stupid. It's like really, really stupid. All right, um, with Gale Wing as well, this is huge. So there are a couple of ways to play Gale Wing. I think we all know the, the first curve that was popularized with uh, Gale Wing is the 3-5-3 three, three curve. Um, I talked on other podcasts about the 5-3-3 uh, three, three curve, uh, but this just changes a lot of things. Not leveling... Like, not tearing you up automatically and only reducing the next tavern tier by five, this changes a lot. Because before, you were getting a huge, uh, like, net gain in gold. Because, like, leveling from five to six, uh, or or sorry, like, like four... Yeah, five to six, uh, potentially, or four to five if you took the, uh, the five, three, three curve... Um, that was, that was a, you know, a a huge gain in gold. And now you still have to spend more gold. Margins are thin. Like this is one of the things we keep talking about. Like margins are razor thin in BGs. The difference between you popping off and you just getting steamrolled in the next battle and dying and never getting that chance is very, very small nowadays with the power. So I don't know. I have to think about Gale Wing more in terms of what is the curve now? Like what is... What are the options, if there are equally good options? Or maybe there's just one good option now. I'm not sure. But this eliminates kind of like the current ways to play Gale Wing um, in, in an effective manner. So at the very least, it will make it a little bit worse. But I'm, I'm leaving it to like the more experienced BG players to tell me, like, is there something I'm not seeing? Is there like some sort of new curve that potentially saves this Mm -hmm. it's really tough i don't see it currently because with the current curves right now it's already you're already cutting it pretty close there's a reason gale wing is not like uh as dominant as it was before they did this like 2.0 patch let me see where gale wing is right now gale wing is the seventh hero Mm -hmm. that's where gale wing is it's like good like you're you're happy enough to take Gale Wing right now, but you're you're just like, okay, well, you know, I, I got a generally good hero. So nerfing Gale Wing by this much, uh it, it's gonna hurt a ton. Yup. All right. Well, that's all the BG changes that we know. Once again, these are data mined changes. They may not make the final cut on Tuesday, but in the times that Blizzard's done this before and we've gotten data mined changes, they've all 
they've all made it through. Sometimes there's like one that doesn't make it through. Sometimes there's one or two additional changes, but these are, it's a pretty good indication of what they're going to do, uh, which is why we talk about it. We wouldn't talk about it if it was like a leak, even if it was like kind of trustworthy, but these are data mine, meaning they're literally in the game that Blizzard has like patched. Uh, they're just not active yet. So uh, I think that's it for our podcast this week. Um, next week, we are probably going to talk a lot about Diablo 2 because Diablo 2 is coming out on Thursday. Diablo 2 Resurrected. You guys should all get it, um, especially if you haven't played Diablo 2 because if you have played Diablo 2, I'm sure you are already wanting to get it despite the ridiculous price tag Blizzard decided to put on this. Uh, it um, It's just going to be fun to kind of get into Battle.net and I hope there's a lot of people that uh, that will be doing it and will be at least staying with the game for a period of time because honestly we're in we're in a, a bit of a dead zone for blizzard games like overwatch 2 is not just around the corner there will be quite some time diablo 4 is god knows when it's coming out uh we haven't even heard any rumblings about the next starcraft so uh blizzard's got some gaps to fill um diablo immortal has even been delayed until next year and i think diablo 2 is supposed to fill this uh this gap so hopefully players uh really take to it and uh this will also be the first release uh after the uh, blizzard scandals uh so it'll also be interesting to uh, to see how like how successful this is compared to what they expect and what whether there's you know significant impact at all from uh uh from from the lawsuit onto people's nostalgia for blizzard games and or people's um uh, feelings about supporting blizzard uh going forward so this is all it's all going to be very interesting uh, we said it before we're going to still play blizzard games and we are looking forward to diablo 2 um if you're watching us like live on twitch we will not be streaming Thursday night, for, but on Friday night's normal stream, that's when we're going to start streaming Diablo 2, and we will probably spend at least one entire week streaming it uh, rather than Hearthstone besides the Sunday stream. Uh, yeah, you can come hang out in my streams where I'll actually talk to you guys. For your stream, I have no idea what they're going to do. What do you mean for my stream? We're going to be streaming together. Or like you're uh-huh. you're gonna be streaming. I'm just gonna like be there because you're just gonna be. I'm just there. gonna be okay. there, right? Like I'm I'm going to. Yeah, they can look at your screen. I don't need them to to be looking at at my screen. Uh, but uh, but yeah, we'll uh, it'll be fun. It'll be fun because we're huge. Like we have played, we literally played Untwink Players Eight Diablo Two, like as late as I don't know like 2008 or like 2010 and merp still plays diablo 2 i still play diablo 2 to this day as in sometimes i'll just get on my pluggy file and do a few runs and my pluggy file is comprehensive that's gonna be the word i'll use so for those of you guys who actually know these things like i have self-found enigma i have like four griffins um like I've made uh, infinities. Like I, I've created. Like I, I've played my file like way, way, way too much. So Diablo two, this coming out, I don't even need to remind myself of anything. I know almost like everything there is to know about the game. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so I'm just excited to be jumping back in. Mm-hmm. Uh, for you though. Yeah, I, I already I already did my research. I dropped about six hours over the course of last week onto reviewing wow, the mechanics okay, okay. and the builds and all the blah 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 stuff. I don't know like the items, uh, the end game items yet, but I probably won't need to for a while because we're you know poor in the beginning. Uh, so it'll be exciting. I'll be a, a poison Javazon, obviously, uh, but also with lightning fury. Yeah, Poison Javazon is not going to get you that far. Hey, in, Poison Javazon is going to get me pretty far. No, I mean, a... in terms of... Because with softcore, I don't... Like, if you care about speed, if you care about all of that, um, 
No. Like, yeah, it's... Poison Javazon's one of uh, one of the best. Uh, I mean, you know, with Lightning Fury, I I don't mean like just Poison Javazon because you don't need all the points in uh, in the Lightning skills. Lightning Fury only gets a twenty percent synergy for twenty points, so it's you, you really don't need to fully oh, synergize you still that. Want, up. You still want all of those points? <laughs> no, you don't really need all those points. Um, also, Charge Strike is like amazing. Yes. So yeah, I would also have Charge Strike because there's only two Poison skills. And Charge Strike is amazing enough that it also does not need all the synergies. Because it's literally taking advantage of a bug. But that's a story uh, yeah. for another time about whether Blizzard will do any kind of balancing with this game. Um, all right. Uh, I think that's it for today. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Shout out to our Patreons at patreon.com slash grittinggoat. Uh, we will give the individual shout outs next week. And um, that's, uh, that's it from us. Until next week, this is Advokta. This is Murp. See you guys.